as you can see, these rocks here have beautiful waterfalls. And also, to some of the nature lovers, it might catch the attention to go and have a swim here, like the be nice, beautiful beaches here in Quinon. And after a long day in the field, you might also want to have a swim. But with my presentation, I would like to focus and stress why these rocks here, with the most important ingredient of life, were also conducive for early life to exist in this Archean Craton of India. So this is a global representation of the various Archean Cretons worldwide. And to talk about the oldest rocks, which were discovered in the Greenland was the Ishwa Greenstone Belt. The, do the rocks here date back to an age of 3.8 billion years. Then we come to the most well-studied Archean Cretons, such as the Kapval Creton in South Southern Africa. Then we go to Pilbara. The rocks here more or less have the same age, which is 3.6. But the rocks here, the important aspect of these rocks are they are better preserved. The rocks here show green sea species of metamorphism. And now we have to go, uh, sorry, we have to go to see newer rocks in India because these rocks here are of a very different age, which is 3.5 billion years old. And I would focus on this aspect of this age uh, more in more details with my, as my presentation progresses. So moving on. Before I go to India and how these rocks are important, there are a few different claims which have uh, been established by several authors and scientists. Hopefully this slide and this photograph will give you some sleepless nights because this has been repeated for over a couple of uh, presentations in the past mm -hmm. few days and also today. This is a recent discovery from uh, Nutman et al. in Ishwa Greenstone Belt where they reported some stomatolites which are of the age of 3.7 billion years. Then, followed by a series of discoveries, but the ages here are a bit younger, which comes from this age of rock 3.4. These are spheroids and spindle-shaped appendages of microfossils reported by Ken Sugitani in Strelipool Formation, and Panorama Greenstone Belt, and various other Greenstone Belt, like the Wara Walloom Greenstone Belt in Bilbao Creton. Very recently, this uh, beautiful microbial mat-like lamination has been discovered by my fellow colleague and PhD student uh, of Barbara Kavalazi, uh, who was working on the barb tree drill core of the Barberton uh, Greenstone Belt, which was carried out by the ICDP. And he discovered some of these mat-like laminations, which show some potential evidences of photosynthetic cyanobacteria in this Barberton Greenstone Belt of the Kapval Creton. The main thing which I want to focus and which I want to point out here is this age here is scanty of biosignatures. We have rocks which show potential life signatures, as in stromatolites from the Ishwa region, which is age of 3.7. Then we have rocks of 3.4, and then we have the same similar coeval age of 3.4 from Southern Africa and Australia. But these rocks, the rocks of uh, age in between 3.7 and younger and older to 3.4 are scanty of biosignatures. So we have to go to India. Now, with India, this Singbum Creton is situated in the eastern part of the Indian Shield, as you can see here. This is in the state of Urissa, a neighboring state of uh, Jharkhand. And, uh, very recently, Hoffman et al. have established a, a stratigraphic classification or a geological evolution model of this Creton here. But since I will be focusing more on the aspects of early life, so I will discuss a bit more on the greenstone belt of this uh, Creton and the greenstone volcanism and the sedimentary processes involved and the processes more conducive and more favorable to early life, which we will investigate a lot more in detail in this southern iron ore group of rocks. So we hunted for the oldest rocks on, on, in this Singbum Creton. We went to places like uh, Eastern IOG, which is known as the Guru Mohishani region, where we see beautiful spinifex texture, Komatiites, high-MG basalts, 
Then we have banded church in the Nuasahi region, which is here, which also shows some meta sediments. But we settle for the southern iron ore group of rocks. And the reason for this settlement of this area, I will discuss and elaborate more with my presentation a bit later. The rocks here were dated with uh, this time capsule zircon. And the age date, the radiometric dating which was done was uranium lead. And the age which was observed or which was, uh, in, uh, which was found was to be 2.51. So this dietary greenstone belt, as you can see here, is a simplified stratigraphic log, which was forwarded by Mukhopadhyay et al. in 2011. And he discusses, discusses some of this uh, greenstone succession with typical assemblages and associations of ultramafic, ultramafic volcanics, bedded jerk uh, horizons, pillow basalts, some felsic volcanics, and then beefs sitting on top of this succession of uh, of rocks. So as you can see, there are the BIFs, which hold some iron ore deposits in this region. Some of the meta sediments here, as you can see, show, show some evidences of cross bedding. Some of the green charts here, as you can see, there are some coarser fractions of sand size, granule size uh, uh, lapilis, and they grade to a very fine silt size particle towards the up up direction of this, uh, of this rock type. So this, is, it, this shows very primary indications of sedimentary processes which, which were very active in this region. And note that this rocks comes, even at the stratigraphic level, lower than the rocks which were dated to be 3.51. So it means that these meta sediments, which I will be discussing a bit more in detail, may be of a different age, maybe even older than 3.51. So for the purpose of our studies, we concentrated and we sampled mostly some of these different chert types. And these chert types were banded black and white chert and the black chert. So the banded black and white chert, if you take this rock in your hand and you see this chert comprises of interspersed microcrystalline quartz with finely lamination, fine laminations of carbonaceous matter. And then you have some thick lamellies and thick units, which are maybe of the size range of one to two millimeters. And these are mostly hosting some kerosene content. While the black shirts also show laminations, they have very finely laminated dull to dark gray laminations of carbonaceous matter. Also, we have another type of massive shirt, which shows no primary sedimentary features such as laminations or bedding whatsoever. We also did some petrographic studies on this different type of church, which we have collected from the field. And here we observe different signatures, such as uh, this association of uh, church, mostly the microcrystalline quartz, with anastomosing layers of uh, crinkly nature laminates of this carbonaceous matter. Moving on to the laminated black chert, we have fine, flaky to fluffy nature of these carbonaceous wisps-like grains associated with detrital quartz grains. Rec very recently, Hickman and Lewis have also regarded these structures to be some kind of mist structures from the Pilbara Gretel. And we see a different variety of uh, chert, which is mostly of granule size, coarse granule shape, crystals surrounded in nature, as you can see in this uh, figure here, and this is with disseminated carbonaceous matter, and these coarse granules also sometimes are lobed in, in nature. So what we have here is that the dietary greenstone belt, or the southern part of this Singbum Creton, not only preserves carbonaceous matter, but we also see similar features which have been discussed by previous scientists like Thais in 2009, where he discussed some possible uh, microbial ripped up, reworked microbial mat laminations. We see similar features in our church. So this possibly indicates some reworked microbial mat-like laminations, which also indicates to a very shallow wave agitated environment. And the deposition of this church must have been in a very shallow water level. Also, we see association of coarse composite carbonaceous grains, which are like this, associated with these fine carbonaceous laminations. 
And this actually shows some of the uh, non isophagous nature of the lamellae of this carbonaceous matter, which is argued potentially for some biological origin of this carbonaceous matter. So we see evidences of photosynthetic activity, uh, shallow water wave agitated environments, and some potential biosignatures. <coughs> Moving on, we did some Raman spectroscopy. And uh, as we all know that Raman is a very important and an efficient technique where one gets to know the structural ordering of this carbon and the uh, metamorphic conditions and the temper temperature, pressure, gradients, also stuff like precursor, precursor materials can be well constrained with, with Raman to some extent. And we can talk a bit more about the metamorphic grade of this rock with Raman. So we dealt with, uh, with some of these features and we, as you can see, we selected one of these uh, ripped up clasps which shows some crinkly lamination on the top and this is somewhat a reworked flat base. So the important thing is, as you can see here, this is a coarse, uh, I mean a massive concentration of carbonaceous matter here, a dense agglo agglo agglomerate type of nature of carbonaceous matter. Also here, the bright golden spots here as mapped by Raman shows the association of the carbonaceous matter, where the, whereas the darker or the brownish spots here are silica. So, the important aspect which we observed is this Raman spectroscope indicates to a very low grade green schist facies, which is also discussed by Yue et al. in 1996. And the characteristic disordered peak which we observe here is similar, very similar to the D peak which Yue discussed in his article. And also the more ordered G peak. So we have potential signatures which indicates to a very low grade metamorphism of this, this greenstone belt. And possibly, as, we, I, as I've already pointed out, that this greenstone belt is a, a very old Paleoarchean succession in the Singbom Craton. This is possibly the best and the oldest preserved carbonaceous matter from India. Most importantly, there are very diverse and interesting and exciting, amazing features which you will come across when you see some of the rocks on the thin section. But to, to, to take a few of these interesting features, I wanted to discuss a bit more in detail. I don't know if I get some ideas or opinions from this conference about this carbonate rom precipitation, which is typically associated with these carbonaceous laminations. And we did some Raman studies and Raman spectroscopy reveals that this carbonaceous matter, as you can see here, gets truncated with the precipitation of this dolomite or carbonate drums. So there is a very, I don't know, I mean, there is some association which is very typical and very ancient, and we don't know the origin of this kind of association of carbonate drums with uh, the carbonaceous matter. But to go closer and to study somewhat similar uh, processes which are operating in the recent days, we have to go to another place in Mexico where there is this lake known as Alchichica. And there in this place, there you see this, uh, these domes of white, white ag agglomerates which are quite roundish to, to spheroidal in nature and sometimes you have this blackish material underneath. So people have attributed this to be sequential fluctuation in the groundwater levels, where you have fluctuations in the MG and CO ratio, CA ratio, I'm sorry, and you have growths of carbonaceous laminations with cyanobacteria acting in this area with precipitation of some aragonite crystals. And the wet period or the dry, uh, the wet period is characterized with this kind of layers, but the dry period is more with the growth of hydromagnesite. So possibly this is the closest of this kind of environments, but we don't really know how this kind of uh, processes must have operated in the past in the Paleoarchean. To, to finally conclude and to finally come to a point where I want to focus and I want to talk a bit more in detail, thank you. I want to focus about this very different and very interesting features which 
we have observed in our rocks and in our thin sections. As you can see, these are appendages which are showing some flared out features like these flanges here. This shows sometimes, sometimes you have a very irregular nature of this wall boundary here, but sometimes you have very smooth walls. And people in the past, like Sugitani, they have discussed and they have elaborated and investigated these spheroidal features in more detail from the Pilbara Graton of Australia. And where they see some uh, irregular wall boundaries of these spheroids or, uh, or, or uh, I think, biological signatures of life, which are potentially microfossils. But very, uh, to, to talk about these microfossils, Initially, this was described and, and discovered by Walsh in 1992 from the Chromebook formation. And the age of this is 3.4, which is from South Africa. Also, the age of this is 3.4, which is also from Australia. So these rocks are from different areas of the world, which show similar age with similar signatures in terms of association and morphological features from Southern Africa and Australia. But as you can see now, we have similar biosignatures, similar taphonomical uh, morphological features, which indicates that these shapes could also be the same microorganisms which must have been discovered in the past in Australia and also from South Africa. So here, I leave you with the oldest microfossils on Earth. And here, we make a new discovery of this oldest spheroidal microfossils from India. To conclude, we have similar landscapes and similar places in the Datar Greenstone Bed, like as you see in Quinon. And there, is, there are some takeaway and messages which I would like to leave with. The 3.51 billion years old Datar Greenstone Bed possibly holds the Paleoarchean greenstone succession which is best preserved in terms of the metasediments which is present here, which is associated with carbon aceous dirt. The metamorphic grade of these rocks are very low, lower green schist facies. The environments here are of shallow water, mostly indicating to some uh, very, uh, uh, very low level of water in these areas, and this could be potential targets of astrobiological investigation, future astrobiological investigation as because we have the oldest microfossils of Earth now, which is 3.5 billion years old. And I would like to leave you with this uh, final thank you slide. And uh, these are the people who have helped me, and I thank the organizers of this conference for inviting and for giving me this opportunity to present our findings and our research. Thank you.